Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, every day, I visit a different industry and explore how technology is transforming it. And today, I want to dive in headfirst and tackle the transportation mobility cloud and also the acceleration of the transformation in the transportation industry. Try saying that, gargling a glass of water. (laughs) Now, Gavin Sherry is the co-founder and CEO of Autonomic. And they're the first open cloud-based platform that connects and empowers modern mobility systems. And with more than 20 years experience in data processing, machine learning, open source, cloud and large-scale internet systems, Sherry previously served as Autonomic's Vice President of Engineering, leading up to the company's acquisition by the Ford Motor Company. I think it was in January 2018. But now, as CEO, Sherry is responsible for spurring the growth of the transportation mobility cloud and scaling the company's goal of accelerating that transformation. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to San Francisco so we can speak with Gavin Sherry, co-founder and CEO of Autonomy. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? My name is Gavin Sherry. I am the co-founder and CEO of a company called Autonomic, originally from Australia, but based in Palo Alto, California. We build cloud software for the automotive industry. So you are the co-founder and CEO of Autonomic, the, the, uh, the first open cloud-based platform that connects and empowers modern mobility systems. But for people that are just tuning in and hearing about Autonomic for the very first time, can you maybe set the scene and tell, them that, and tell me more about the kind of real-world problems that you're solving with it? Well, we came across the idea ourselves uh, three or four years ago when we noticed that while smartphones were advancing really quickly, the digital side of transportation, particularly vehicles, was somewhat lagging behind. Uh, it wasn't, if we hopped into a car, even a very expensive car, we didn't have the same consumer internet style experience that we associated with Amazon, Google, Netflix, and so on. And we wanted to know why that was. It was a classic kind of question here in, in Silicon Valley. So we started scratching the surface on engaging closely with automotive companies. And we realized it was a missing piece. Uh, and we sought to build that missing piece. Uh, we call that Transportation Mobility Cloud or TMC. And we feel that it, it solves some of the complex problems behind the scenes that transportation providers and automotive companies really need in order to adopt and embrace new kinds of digital technology. In terms of the everyday things that your listeners uh, would uh, hope for, expect, or, or be used to, that would be anything from uh, a sort of owner application that you might use from your phone to remotely start an engine, open the doors, honk the horn, understand the performance of your vehicle, through to something with uh, maybe uh, scooter technology. Uh, some of your listeners might be familiar with uh, electric scooters that you can locate on, on the street, unlock, and use for a short period of time. We have technology in that area, all the way through to ride-hailing technology, such as we associate with Uber and the other uh, ride-hailing companies. We've put all of that into one place, really so that uh, new participants or even uh, established participants like automakers uh, can uh, get access to the same kind of technology and build commensurate experiences for their customers. So your transportation mobility cloud, the TMC there, enables any developer or automaker to easily build a new transport transportation experience with APIs that provide vehicle data and driver behavior. But do you have any use cases or client stories that maybe will help listeners further visualize just how it fits into their current worldview? Because I think very often, I mean, you've just mentioned like the scooters and the Ubers there. Nobody thinks about the technology underneath it, do they? They, they, they don't. Uh, but I'll give a very simple example uh, that we should hopefully make all of our lives better. We've been working with Ford and Avis, the large rental company, to help provide them a digital experience that improves uh, the, the customer experience for their uh, customers and, and users. We can provide real-time access uh, to the vehicles through those APIs that you spoke about so that people can find a vehicle 
uh, on, on a lot. They can unlock the vehicle, they have to go searching for the keys. They can see a little of the history of the vehicle. And also so that Avis can monitor the vehicle as it's being used, look at things like fuel level, if a customer has been in a collision, uh, anything of that sort. That allows them, that gives them the sort of digital feeling to their business that usually we associate with more high-tech companies like Uber. All of the participants within the mobility ecosystem, as I've mentioned before, be it automakers, rental companies, or even the more advanced startups in the area of scooters can, can participate equally uh, within the TMC and get all of those benefits. And one of the big tech trends that I'm seeing here now is the, the rise of the experience economy. So mm. can you tell me more about how you're creating experiences such as routing self, self-driving cars, managing fleets, or equally just helping residents plan their transit journeys? By looking at all of uh, the vehicles that are connected to our platform and understanding or inferring certain traffic patterns, working with outside providers as well, we can build the kind of routing systems that were usually reserved for very high-tech companies such as uh, Google or Apple. And we've been able to do so to solve problems that are now facing automakers, such as in the example that you gave, which is autonomous vehicle technology. It turns out that routing autonomous vehicles is even harder than routing um, you know, standard uh, driver-controlled uh, cars. The reason is that there are different policies and laws associated with the use of autonomous vehicles. They're not allowed to use some roads. They're only allowed to use some areas at certain times of day. They also don't like to be driven into the sun and other things like that. So they they have more constraints associated with them. We've worked with different partners in, in Silicon Valley who are highly specialized in this area and incorporated their technology into TMC so that automakers can benefit from it. While these problems are very uh, complex, they're really at the edge of, of computer science uh, right now, we've tried to present them in an easy con- to consume, easy to understand way so that developers can benefit without having to understand that those deep complexities behind the scenes. I'm curious, as someone with over 20 years experience in data processing, machine learning, open source cloud, and large-scale internet systems, what is the story behind you getting involved with the transportation mobility cloud? It's a good question. Uh, I, I had worked really around infrastructure technology. It was usually the case that I was building software that another person would incorporate into their product and that person would further incorporate it into another product. And so I was somewhat removed from the end customer. I had noticed that uh, more and more I was just using uh, things like Uber and other sharing style uh, economy uh, systems and it was surprising to me because usually I, I had driven everywhere. You know, months would go by here in Silicon Valley and I, I wouldn't actually drive a car. And I wanted to know why it was. So we began to explore the area. We, we felt that ownership of vehicles had kind of peaked and we foresaw a change that was somewhat akin to the introduction of the internet and its impact on society. Put simply, we felt that everyone everyone in the world would be impacted by these changes that we were seeing in, in mobility, what with electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, micro, micro mobility, and so on. So we wanted to just be a part of that. It was like, We're in a very lucky position here in Silicon Valley where we get to kind of determine what we'd like to spend our, our time on. We wanted to be part of that because it was so different and interesting. It was an industry in change. There, were, there was going to be a big value, or there will be a big value migration from big established players to new big players, you know, such as Lyft and, and Uber. We wanted to be part of that, and we wanted to do something that was helpful to the industry. So we developed the Transportation Mobility Cloud. Now, adoption is always the key to the success of any new technology. But when I was researching you guys, I quickly learned that TMC has already been adopted by companies such as RideOS for AV mapping and routing, Spin for micromobility, and Alibaba Cloud connected cars in China. Is, is that something you can expand on? Yeah, we, we've been working really closely with different uh, partners in, in the ecosystem. In fact, we you know announced a collaboration with uh, Amazon Web Services uh, recently, and a collaboration with Fujitsu uh, as recently as, as a few weeks ago. 
it there's a huge amount of interest in what we're doing and, and in the disruption that's taking place in the industry. So we're seeing a lot of large tech players uh, develop a point of view on the industry and want to contribute and, and engage and obviously make, make money uh, within this big change. And uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, existing established players. I, I mentioned Avis before, uh, Enterprise, you know, another large rental company is someone we've been really closely engaged with also. So there's just a huge amount of interest and, and desire to, to partner and engage and try and determine together what uh, the industry has in store for us. It's been really rewarding. Now, I believe that Autonomy was actually acquired by the Ford Motor Company in January last year. So can you tell me more about that? And also, what does it mean for Autonomy and scaling the business and moving forward? It was indeed acquired by a Ford Motor Company um, maybe 15 or 16 months ago. Ford was our biggest customer at the time of acquisition. Uh, clearly, we, we must have been contributing in a, in a really meaningful way because, yeah, they, they came by uh, with, with an offer to acquire us. We really like Ford Motor Company because, first of all, they're experiencing the dynamics that we talked about. Secondly, they know that they need to do something about it. Third, they're very humble in, in the requests for, for help and the desire to really collaborate and engage and find uh, that breakthrough thing that's going to really impact the industry in a way that that you know, the creators of Ford or Henry Ford himself found that very impactful thing with mass manufacturing and, and the creation of, of those early uh, vehicles. So they, they understand the nature of the problem uh, and, and really want to work with us on it. The company has been kept uh, separate. It's, it's operated independently. Uh, I, as CEO, have you know, a lot of discretion in how to operate the company, report to a board, and, and so on. And so that, that's been really healthy for our company. We're able to grow. The kind of constraints that are usually associated with uh, a startup company don't come into play. At the same time, it adds a huge amount of credibility as well because it's often the case that the other large automakers before we were acquired by Ford really wanted to know how serious we were, whether we were able to operate at their scale. Um, has anyone really made a big bet on us? Now that's very clear. We've put in place different mechanisms as well, like legal and technical mechanisms, such that Ford is not gaining some unfair competitive advantage from their ownership of the company. It's not about getting access to anyone else's secrets. It's about building great technology in the way that Amazon Web Services builds great technology and powers rival uh, video streaming services, for example, including Netflix, which competes with its own video streaming service. We've taken that model and we're applying it to the mobility industry. And there really does appear to be a constant stream of new players in mobility at the moment. But can you tell me more about how you believe that collaboration, not competition, is actually the key to an efficient and even more importantly, of course, a sustainable transportation network? At these very nascent periods uh, during times of change, companies spring up everywhere. It's very difficult to understand precisely where things are going to land like my crystal ball works about as well as anyone else's that is um, very defectively so when trying to understand how to operate and win and and make a contribution to an industry two things tend to be true for me first of all i try and focus on on collaboration in areas where we don't intend uh, to compete so that we have a more compelling offering for customers simpler, easier to consume, with as many um, questions answered up front as possible. Secondly, we try and focus on things that will remain the same rather than change and get really, really good at those so that irrespective of what bigger picture trends take place that no one could have predicted, we and our partners are, are there when our customers need it. And we are living in an age of exponential change right now. And obviously, 5G is waiting on the horizon. So what does the future look like for Autonomic? And can you share what, what listeners can expect over the next three to five years? I really anticipate that, say, connected vehicle just by itself is really going to take off. Today, there are about 1.3 billion vehicles on the road. Maybe 50 or 60 million of those vehicles are, quote unquote, connected vehicles. But all automotive companies are aggressively connecting uh, new models. 
So we can expect a lot of new experiences in the cabin. You can expect things like speech recognition, uh, like a lot more entertainment options, more sophisticated, modern uh, engagement in the vehicle, more digital options in the vehicle. And by equal measure, we can expect more uh, capability on our phone as an interface to the vehicle itself. We'll move beyond you know, some of the basics, uh, such as locating the vehicle or maybe opening the trunk uh, remotely, allowing people to, say, deliver to, to our trunk or boot for your uh, uh, Commonwealth listeners. <laughs> and I've uh, got to go back to my origins there. <laughs> uh, uh, and we'll, we'll see more advanced options like uh, integration into the household. I think will be uh, through home automation systems. I think this is going to be a big deal all the way through to increased capability around autonomy. Well, I think the hallmark of the future is that vehicles will get better after you buy them. And that's going to be a really big change to the industry. The reason I feel that that was the case is that in essence, that is one of the great things about the modern generation of smartphones. Even though I, I buy it uh, and I buy it up front, there are new apps, there are new features, there are new capabilities that land on our phones uh, as they get updated after we buy them. That's what cars should be like. It's an incredibly exciting future that you guys have got ahead of you, an incredibly exciting space as well to be involved in. So for anyone listening that wants to find out more information, follow you online, and even contact a member of your team if they've just got any questions at all, what's the, the best way to get in touch with you and, and find you online? First of all, the website, which is autonomic.ai. And secondly, we have an email address, info at autonomic.ai which will reach me and other members of our uh, leadership and, and marketing teams uh, so that we can en engage with anyone who would like to learn more. Well, I think for so many people listening, much of what we've talked about would have been or felt like sci-fi just a few years ago or something that will happen one day. But after listening to you today, it's a timely reminder that the future is right now. So thanks so much for joining me today and sharing that story with me. Thank you. Thanks so much. Autonomic is a startup that was acquired by Ford last year. But I love how it's connecting this fragmented transportation ecosystem. And a big thank you to Gavin for opening my eyes to this constant stream of new players in mobility. But also, most importantly, how collaboration, not competition, is the key to an efficient and sustainable transportation network. But over to you. It's time for me to pass the virtual microphone over to you. We've spoken to Gavin Sherry today. I'm going to post all the details and all the links over on a blog post at techblogwriter.co.uk where you can read more about it and listen to this podcast again. But I want to hear your thoughts, your insights, your expertise and everything that you took away from today's conversation. So please email me techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. I think it's so important to get your thoughts and everything you take away from these conversations every day. And also, let me know where you listen to the podcast too. But I'm afraid we're out of time yet again. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I will return tomorrow. And I've got a very, very, very special guest lined up for you all. And I'll see you then. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.